Since the beginning of mankind, meat has always been on the menu, whether we've been hunting on our own or if a farmer has raised it for us. But for the last hundred years, farming has become more and more of an industry, and today, 10 billion animals are killed every year for food in the US alone, according to the USDA. That's a lot of meat. And a lot of meat requires a lot of water, and a lot of grains, and a lot of grass. This means that the meat industry is putting an enormous strain on the environment. And with all the hormones and antibiotics, is meat even still a natural product? Maybe the meat industry should start taking responsibility. Or maybe we should all become vegetarians instead. Let's face it, that's not going to happen. But there is a solution. Something that could make us live healthier lives and also help our planet in terms of reducing the emission of greenhouse gases substantially. More or less solve the climate crisis. The solution is called in vitro meat. In vitro meat is entirely produced in labs. Yes, it might sound a bit gross, but let me show you that it's not. This is a cow. Traditionally, we'd kill it to collect its meat, but not anymore. Instead, we take some stem cells from the cow and grow them in a lab. When these cells have multiplied, we put them in a super nutritious soup that converts them into muscle cells, which we grow with electric impulses. And ta-da, we now have meat which can be made into, for example, sausages or hamburgers. In theory, a single cell from one animal could be used to feed the entire global population without stressing the environment. In vitro meat will be 100% pure muscle. And because we have full control over the production process, we can replace dangerous artery-clogging saturated fats with healthy fats like omega-3. In other words, we can make a hamburger that's actually good for you. This new way of producing meat would use 45% less energy than traditional meat production, require 99% less land, create 96% less greenhouse gas emissions, and use 96% less water. In vitro meat could be in grocery stores within 5 to 10 years. But it's not a question of time, it's a question of money. Scientists need funding to complete their research and make the production process more efficient. By 2050, the Earth's population is estimated to be 9 billion, so finding a sustainable alternative to today's traditional meat production is clearly critical. Please, spread the word, and hopefully soon we'll be able to enjoy meat that is good for us, better for the environment, and not to mention all the billion animals that no longer have to suffer. It is an alternative to uh, today's meat industry. It can be an alternative. Yeah. Well, the feedback has been pretty good, I guess. Very it's good. A, yeah. We were we were not expecting as much uh, as much about it that uh, yeah. is how like become. But um, yeah, it's great. Because, so uh, uh, so I I think we're gonna take it like forward uh, yeah. and just see what happens. I mean. Um, not just in this field, but in many fields, Sweden is very, I mean, in the front. Um, but I think uh, we have been talking to Chalmers, uh, University of Technology, which are the ones uh, that have shown a lot of interest in in vitro meat. And it was on uh, Chalmers, uh, the university's initiative, that, that this workshop was held in Sweden. Uh, and uh, why why everybody thinks that Sweden is uh, in the lead? I, I think it's just because there aren't that many countries right now that do research in in vitro meat. First of all, uh, um, knowledge of in vitro meat that this is an alternative, and because many many haven't even heard of it, they don't know that uh, this is an alternative that is being um, uh, worked on but hopefully get them interested in this solution also so that uh, spread spread a hope about a better future but, but but mostly so that they want to spread the word of in vitro meat at the time i was reading a book uh, about you know uh, technology and how technology impact our society and i came across about um, uh, the idea of producing uh, basically uh, in vitro meat. At the time uh, I call it artificial meat. So this for me was really a, a sound idea because uh, we can, for example, uh, be more efficient in producing animal proteins which they are very valuable. 
and uh, by and using less less lens. And then you know another important thing uh, is you know how these stem cells can really turn into into mature tissues tissues. And again, then after we have this mature tissue, uh, are all those transformation required you know to uh, become meat still uh, be possible on on this uh, situation and then of course there are problems about uh, the sera the sera which you know uh, it can't be it can it cannot come from again from um, from uh, from uh, from fetus from it, it can have it can come from uh, from an animal product you know okay so we basically a lot of research has to be uh, conducted in this field, you know, in order to produce, let's call it artificial sera or something which can replace, you know, the sera coming from um, from from fetus, for example. One thing is doing something at the laboratory level, but we can easily, you know, we can easily we can get, you know, uh, enough materials and show that it's possible to make a prototype and sausages, sausages, for example. Another thing would be, you know, produce these uh, on a mass scale production. That would be completely another star, um, source. You have to think that normally it takes two, three years of research, or you know, in order uh, at the laboratory level. Then you know, you you try to scale up. So more or less, you know, you can you you can have an idea if things goes well that in a relatively short time we, we, you could go to the market. But again, here we are targeting uh, the OPA. We are targeting a kind of uh, means products, a sausage is like or an hamburger type products, okay? Because at the moment it's very difficult, you know, uh, to make these muscle cells, you know, mm, develop into a really a muscle tissue. It's kind of difficult. But what we can do, what we can get is uh, there are basically is more a mass of things which uh, resemble a texture of a, of, of a processed meat products, okay? Which is not too bad because um, at least particularly in 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 in, uh, in Western in the Western world, both I would say North America and Europe, but I would say also Latin Latin America, uh, most of most of the most of the people or consumers they are sh they are shifting to buy you know processed meat products in the form of nuggets, hamburger. Uh, we can get something similar to or even better, I would say, with the food technologies that we we you know that we we have. That, that uh, we can use, we can really produce a product which is competitive and and even same quality or even better of the of the processed products that are currently on the market. However, there are several ways of looking at sustainability. Sustainability, I call I call it, you know, the you know you can do with uh, using more technology or you know going back to what to what it was before the industrial revolution. So so you have two approaches uh, how you know to produce something sustainable. The, the the way I like the most, the way I choose is that one which you know choose a more intensive technology, more knowledge in order you know to make more sustainable uh, products. The beauty is that we can really reformulate uh, the food chain in a way that is much more sustainable. Biggest things or one of the major things that I thought oh, uh, was so great during the workshop is that everybody was very very open in discussing their research which is not always the case in other areas. I mean, people are kind of close and they don't want to share all information. Within the in vitro meat community, it doesn't matter. You, we are all in there together and we all try to share as much information as possible, even if we haven't published it anywhere. I think the biggest thing or the biggest achievement that we had is that we have, everybody came together, we worked on how how we would want to go further i mean how do we want what want to, what do we want to do in the future and where where we want to go how we want to do that and that we formed like this kind of group and now trying to apply for money i think that was one of the biggest steps to get everybody together to get to identify the major challenges and then say okay this is how we want to try to solve it. What I think personally, one of the biggest challenges is probably to scale the whole process up to make something that is um, easily integrated into more fabricate or more faculty um, kind of technology so that we can have large quantities produced um, at the same time. Producing and if 
if we would have initial research money and then continue with having money from companies who develop that further to a more commercialized product, I think you could uh, should be able to produce something within 10 to 15 years. The most impact we would have on on the environmental aspects that so we can produce meat with much less environmental impact compared to normal uh, production. I think everybody should pay attention because um, if we look at the um, meat production today, we are already having around 20-24% of uh, all the CO2 emissions are coming from the meat production. If we rise the amount of meat that we consume in the same manner as we did over the last couple of years, we will have doubled uh, within 10 to 20 years, which then leads us to the question, are we actually able to produce that kind of meat? And my answer would be no, we don't. We need another solution if everybody wants to continue as much meat as we do now uh, today.